Welcome to the Veteran Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Levi Miller. And I'm Tom Lucan, the other host. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight. Uh, uh, geez, it's hard to believe this is about their ninth or tenth week now doing this. But uh, uh, again, I'd like to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, I'd like to welcome our guest tonight is Chris Shockey. Chris, uh, Chris is a veteran. A U.S. Army veteran who spent time in Korea and in Iraq. Uh, so, uh, but uh, Chris, how you doing? And welcome to the show. I'm all right. And thanks for having me. Anytime, Chris. Yeah, so uh, Chris, give us a little background of your military career. Just, you know, what exactly you did and how long and so forth. Well, I joined in 1997. I was a 12 Bravo combat engineer. Um, got out in 2004. My first duty station was Fort Carson. And from there, I did a year in Korea and came back to Fort Benning. So I did CKB. But most people did CKC. And <laughs> while I was at Fort Benning, we deployed in 2003 for the invasion of Iraq in the start of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Which is still going to this, uh, well, it's not Operation Iraqi Freedom, the war, but. <laughs> uh, hey, tell me before we Chris. Hey, Chris, when you was in Fort Benning, were you in Sand Hill or Kelly, uh, what, Kelly Chop or Kelly Hill? Which one you were? Oh, yes, yeah. I was Kelly Hill. <laughs> okay. And Fort Benning, you know, it's been a long time since I've been there, Chris. But that's still a pretty big open place, right? Yeah. Well, they they shut down, like, 3rd Brigade, 3rd ID. Oh, did they? Totally, okay. Yeah, it's now one, like, battalion up on Kelly Hill. Okay. And uh, um, I was with 317th Engineer Battalion, and now they're attached to 10th Mountain Division, but they're at Fort Polk. Poke, poke, loose oh, at him. <laughs> hey, Chris, I, I don't was, know how. Huh? I don't know how Tim Mountain has a unit in Fort Polk, but they do. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, I was down there in '69. I took my EIT in Fort Polk, and uh, it's, <laughs> that place is something else. <laughs> I did say yeah, I did Osa at Fort Lawson Woods. <laughs> yeah, well, remember he went. Uh, Chris, remember when Levi went through, it was called Tiger Land then. It was in, during the heat of Vietnam. Oh, yeah. So, and uh, so uh, just to give you an idea, Levi might not, or Chris might not know Levi, but, uh, oops, sorry, I got doing something else. Apologize. But uh, Levi was in Korea, like you said, 69 to 70. So and then he had a month TDY in Vietnam from there. An exciting uh, month, right, Levi? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Tom. That'd be like that'd be like being in Iraq and going TDY to Afghanistan. I don't know how that works. Oh yeah, I I, I, I know. Well, it's like being uh being stationed in Fort Irwin, uh, middle of desert, shield and storm. Then they suddenly decide you can volunteer to TDY to to the big desert for a month. Yeah, it's hard to say, so... Uh, yeah, the Army, yeah, the Army got a way of doing things, right, Thomas? What's that? I said the Army got a way of doing things, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, Levi, he was, like you said, Chris was with a uh, second ID. He kind of overlapped me. Okay. I was a contractor. Uh, you got there, what, in March or April of 2000, Chris? March 22nd of 2000. When I left okay, March we of 2003. Ah, okay. So, see, we overlapped by about four months because I left uh, that summer in the uh, middle of July, three and a half, four months. And uh, that's why I left and came back to the States for the last time. Besides a little mini tour about, a month, about 15, 16 months ago. So, uh, but... Uh, yeah, Chris was there, but like I said, we overlap. Uh, I don't know when they moved out of Camp Castle, Chris, but Chris was up at Camp Castle north of Camp Casey, Levi. Okay. And he was there, just so you know. They, and uh, so, second, second Chris, came back to 
States in 06 or 07. Yeah. Well, you know what? It seemed like uh, they closed down Camp Home. They closed down the last two camps in the Western Corridor in 2004, after you even left, Chris. So, uh, I don't believe it or not, it's been 16 years since you even left, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I'm like so, 14 years after my tour in Iraq. I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got a son. How old's your eldest, eldest boy? You know when you're getting old, when guys you're in with, their kids are now in. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was, That's that, a good sign. That's right. Well, my son's been out. Let's see, he went in. John went in 2008, and he's been out over three years already. In fact, it was three years back before Christmas time, so uh, he'll be 28. So, of course, he was born in Korea, too. So, uh, but again, yeah, what was, uh, but let me get back on track here. Uh, you were, Chris was at Camp Castle with Second Engineers. Uh, what was your duty like for, uh, we'll start with Korea. And I know you're at uh, Fort Clark, too, and we all know what stateside duty is like. It's always boring. But, uh, uh, what was your uh, year like in Korea with uh, Second Engineers? What type of training or events did you all do while they, when you were with them? Well, I got there and I grew up in Mount Vernon, Illinois, and we always met at Peoria High School in the state championship. The headquarters company commander was from that high school. He saw me oh. <laughs> and he set me up. <laughs> and he was kind of like uh, Colonel Blake from MASH. Oh, yeah, had fish and stuff going on. <laughs> I mean, when we went to the field, he, he we went fishing the engine. Uh, Jim Cat, I did you. Uh, did you guys actually do any work on any of the minefields or that while you're up there? While you're over there? Um, we had to go up there and check. Well, since I was his driver, there's two platoons tasked with, like, if North Korea came south to go up and do some stuff. So I got to drive the squad leader some platoon stars up there. And we also messed around in the minefields. And, of course, you had, when I was there, you had war speed and triple threat. Yeah, yeah. Annual big events. But well, see, like by that, they had the engine. They had the engineer brigade they created back in the mid nineties. It was at, it, at that Camp House was still open then, right? It was an engineer yeah. brigade at Camp House. So yes, I kind of forgot engineer about that. Forty fourth Engineer Battalion. And yeah, well, they had a film everywhere. They actually forty four engineers had a camp down there by oh my god, Camp Mobile. Down uh, on that trip, what they call Nam Samar on Korean. Mm-hmm. Like if you're heading out the gate and heading towards the Western Corridor, uh, off on the left, it's not Camp Mercer. I forget the name of. Uh, um, you and Jerry say the camp. Well, huh? That's yours? No. Say again? Camp that's yours? No, no, that's the it was down by uh, Weijang Booth. I'm trying to think. It was when you went out. Uh, you went out, Casey, straight out the main gate. On the right, you had Camp Mobile. You passed that. You went over the river, and you go down the road, and it curves a little bit to the left and back to the right. Well, Nimble. on the left, Nimble. Nimble. Yeah, Camp Nimble. Yeah. It's by the way, that's gone now. It was gone in 2015. Mine was over there, so. But Camp Mumble, yeah, the engine, 44 Engineers was there uh, for a long time. And uh, back then, uh, when they first went there, they were part of 8th Army, not 2nd ID. So, and, uh, but yeah, you guys still had to maintain the mine, some of the minefields, huh? Even though we didn't yes. own the sector. So, yeah, just... But, uh, just a few yeah, because I, most of the... Rock Army huh? mostly did it, but we still were in charge of some of them. 
Yeah, the floating minefields, as you and I talked about before, so, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, yeah, of course, Levi can say a lot about the DMZ. He was a grunt, though, Chris. Yeah, yeah, love him, Bravo, Chris. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I scored two points higher on the Azmat. Oh, okay. Two points higher. Uh, I know what yeah. you, I know what you mean, Chris. But hey, uh, I think I scored. I scored higher than everybody, and I was a nineteen Delta. <laughs> yeah. I was a gas guy. Yeah, uh, yeah but, Chris. Uh, when we went the. Uh, when our AIT, we had to go to Pork Pork. We uh, we know we we love Bravo. And, <laughs> and in fact, in basic Thomas and Chris, uh, like half of the squad, they kept they still shooting with the uh, M14, and the one that the guy was a good sign, the one was going to infantry. In our seven week, we started training with the M16. Yeah, the original one before they came out the A1. Uh huh. Probably. You didn't have the four. The difference between the original and the A1 was the four to assist. Okay. Uh, and uh, that was pretty much it. And a couple other minor things. Then you had the A2s came out in 88 while I was in Korea yeah. on my second tour. So, And uh, you guys still had the A2s in 2000. I know that. So We went to the uh, A3s in 2001. What's that? We went to the eighth reason like two thousand one, two thousand two. Chris, oh, in there once. I was are you talking Benny once? When we went to the. Oh, okay. I was at Fort Benning when we went to the A threes, which the difference was pretty much your hang darts. It had the stuff where you can attach everything. Oh, I was definitely to ask you, Chris. Well, you know, what what is the A three? I've been Air gone four. so long, Chris, since since since. Uh, I came out in 1970. Yeah, it, it's the one with the rail system. Okay. Where you put the combat handle and the flashlight and pack four lasers, hmm. your cooler, and oh, yeah, all the stuff you so lose in the army and charge you for. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, see the eighty twos. Chris is familiar. With those, those are the stupid ones that were in eighty eight to put the three round burst on. Yeah, Tom, you That's was telling me something about that too. Oh, they did away with it, right, Chris? Well, the trigger. Was huh? It? On the eighty threes, they did a, They got rid of the three round burst, right? They went back to full auto. No. When no, it was still three round. No, it was still three round. I think like special ops get fully auto, but they still don't trust like the average private with fully automatic. Uh huh. Is the guys in Vietnam got melting barrels? And... Yeah, running through yeah. ammo. Now, see, when John was in Afghanistan, he had a what was it M4 or a version of the M4. This was full auto. My son John. That was two thousand nine. That might have been the A four. But the A3 still yeah. got three number, huh. which I never used. I thought, yeah, well, I thought they were going to do away with it. Of course, you're too busy using C4. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that and grappling hooks. <laughs> yeah, Tumble, we, we, Tumble, we used to cook with that C4 sometime. Yeah, oh, yeah, as long as you didn't step on it. Yeah, there you go. We <laughs> shave with it. Up with it. Right. <laughs> oh, you mean to heat up your water, Chris? Yep. Yeah. Now you you said you went for uh, the Fort Benning. Then you went for Fort Benning to o- OIF, then, right? Yes. We and went, uh, we shipped over January. Well, I landed in Kuwait in January seven of two thousand three. And, of course, you know the Army. Every rumor mill. And if we don't invade Iraq in two weeks, we're going home next week. Kind of thing. <laughs> 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 then finally we just moved next to the border and we're like, oh, I guess it's really happening. Uh, wow. Now, what type of vehicle were you on for Iraq? I was 
Humvee, 9997. Oh, and you're in that country. Oh, yeah. Plastic <laughs> canvas for war and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's painted green, like. too, probably. <laughs> no, mine was actually all tan. But I did what? have a green... Yeah, mine was all tan. But I did have a green uh, mop suit. Well, the J-List. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. So... How about the L- LBE or LBE or whatever the hell they call them now? A little berry. You turn them in. Oh, um, you got tan ones? We got. No, mine was green, but we have the new Sappy Plate system with the Molly system. Oh, but you still wore green sure. over there for your tour. Yeah. And I got, uh, I got me. Yeah, well, that's like during Desert uh, Storm. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, they get the nice tan, you know, tan colored uh, BDUs, and uh, and we're wearing old, dra- you know, battle green <laughs> rattle, as we call it, for the LBEs. And uh, it's like, yeah, okay, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice camouflage uniform, but green, you know, it might as well say green for us an LBE, you know. And, well, uh, for us. We got the DC, the desert camo uniform. Okay. But for the invasion, we had to wear the chemical suits. The army had just come out with a new system. It was lighter and a different type type of charcoal for the chem suits. Oh, not like so we used people, to have. Yeah, and they had a built-in hood, and it was it was kind of nice, a little lighter, a little cooler. But the thing was, since it was just coming out, everyone was mismatched. Some people had all green. Some people had all desert. Some people had desert pants with green tops, green pants with desert tops. (laughs) (laughs) All messed up. And the thing is, because they're just new, they didn't have enough produced yet. So we only got a certain amount. And being an engineer, using Constantino wire... Both our suits were ripped open by the second week of the war. So if we did get slimed, we, I guess, used duct tape. Yeah, I was going to say, or your SOL. So, yeah. Were they using the old MA alarm still for that time? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I got a story about those, but. <laughs> you know what they're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, the ones where you fart in the wind and they go off. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that too. That's not <laughs> what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, it uh, smoked, it smoked the wrong type of cigarette and sets it off and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not going to... That's going FBC. Hey, uh, for Levi, for your knowledge, I, I'm not sure what you guys had uh, back in 6970. I go through the 80s, 90s, and even then, we were, they, oh my God, then the alarm system was in play for many years. That was a, kind of a leftover from the Cold War. Uh-huh. So, and it, it, it was, was the yeah. paper. What's that? And the M9 paper. We were still using Oh, M9 yeah, paper. the chemical. Yeah, of course, that changed different colors depending what you got on it, too. Oh, wow. So, we got I, nothing like that. <laughs> We were outside of Alsamoa, and I was asleep in my Humvee, and someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, Gas. I'm like, somebody what? Gas. Someone tapped me on the shoulder, real quiet, and whispered, Gas. (laughs) I got up and looked. And I'm like, so how many vehicles have you told? Twelve. I'm like, if you told twelve people there's, or twelve vehicles that there's gas like this, and I'm not dead... I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The first arm. They reached the first arm. He goes, what What makes you think there's gas? And eight alarms going off. Okay. Did you check the N9 paper? Tom knows the N9 paper changes colors depending on the gas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, or they said cold. it changed. Yes. They said it changed red. They're red. Let 
Khaleesi. They handed him a red Kim light. <laughs> wow. So, you're going to check a piece of paper that changed colors with a colored lens. Go back and check again. Take your mask off and check again. They come back with their mask on, yelling gas. Why is it gas? It changed green. He's like, if you show me a green chem light, and yes, they checked it with the green chem light. <laughs> oh, dear. So he's yeah. like, um, when's the next convoy going into battle? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, see the chemical lights, chem lights as we call them. Of course, now you find them in all the damn stores for kids. But uh, chem lights for Levi's Mallets there and, and for everybody else. Is uh, they're plastic sticks. And it's a chemical reaction light. And the first uh, ones I've seen were, I think, eighty three. I know it was eighty four for sure for Rally. Uh-huh. And uh, but you break the there's a whole glass tube inside, and you you break the stick where it breaks the chemicals loose and shake it up, and it stays lit for quite a while. So uh, and it's a uh, it's what it is. It's a chemical light, and it's a non-toxic chemical light. You just shake it up. Of course, you know, for the longest time, it's just green ones. And the last, you know, uh, eventually they start going to more colors. Of course, now you go to a Dollar Tree store and get them for like, you know, a buck for a kid to play with or wear at Halloween or whatever. Wow. They got all kinds yeah. of chem lights out. And so... Uh, you know, they got some other goofy names to it. I look at somebody, I go, that's a chem light. What? I said, that's what they originally were, is chem lights. Or, you know, I forget what they call them now, but, you know, the civilians call them. But, yeah, they're chem lights. But, yeah, that's something that came up. Uh, they started about 35, 34 years ago, Levi. Okay. Alex. I would know that, that's all new to me, all new. Yeah, yeah, that's all new. In, in the early 80s, it was new. So... And, uh, so, Tom, you're there when it started. When did the Ken Light battery thing start? <laughs> <laughs> For everyone I, in that older generation, one of the new tricks on the privates was to send them to Como for Ken Light batteries. And then yeah, send them yeah. to Star Major. And the Ken Light's a squelch oil. <laughs> <laughs> Box of grid My squares. <laughs> yeah, the grid squares got me. And the I, squall trial got me, by the way. I was in Boy Scouts before I joined, so I knew a lot, especially since most of my scout masters were former military. Okay. My platoon sergeant asked for a box of grid squares. Tom knows me, I'm a smart. But. I cut up a map. I I went up and cut a map up in grid squares and gave them a box of grid squares. For about two and a half weeks, I was taping the map together. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you, the one that got me was squelch oil. Because it sounded realistic. You know, I mean, I had a box of grid squares, you know, that kind of stuff I'd feel and figure it out right away. But when they said squelch oil, I'm thinking, what kind of oil is that? But you know how the Army is with its strange things, and I was a young private. So I went up, I forget where, to, I think the motors are, and asked them for squelch oil. And, of course, like anybody else, they said you on the end run, you know, looking for it. And uh, But squelch oil, I remember that was the one that got me. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but... Uh, how long were you in Iraq for then, Chris? So long. I was there for between six and seven months. We got to come home early since we did the Viking raids. And then, what was that? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea, Chris? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're the ones that invaded the country, so we got to come home early. Oh, you said Viking raids. I'm thinking, I thought you meant something yeah. serious. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, no. and Chris, what well, was... Uh, I mean, the Thunder 
runs. They were serious. I know the Korean well, people, thunder the people that done time in Korea thought of thunder runs as something different, but... No, uh, the thunder runs in Korea was uh, take a run to the Ville. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, Chris, and that's kind of what they were in Iraq too. But there's guns and tanks involved. Well, Chris, what was it? Uh, what was it like in Iraq? Uh, at first, you didn't see a lot of people. Okay. Most of them hid out. I mean, the Air Force dropped the pamphlet saying "Stay home." Uh -huh. Then, um, when we got to Ann Nazaria, when Jessica Lynch got captured and all that. The army started taking off their clothes and wearing civilian stuff. So we're told there's no more army and civilian difference. But that's but when we got to Baghdad the first week, they all had white flags waving. They're throwing flowers, giving us hugs and kisses. But that changed pretty quick. <laughs> um, they are looting. Stealing stuff, robbing stores, burning stuff. And, and we couldn't do nothing about it. We're still in wartime mission. We weren't in a police time mission. So the the store owners and all that started getting mad at us. Then all of a sudden, George Bush does his landing on the aircraft carrier. <laughs> okay. And our mission changed. <laughs> then we were able to start arresting people, and now the people are mad at us because they can't get away with doing whatever they want. And the flowers became rocks. And about mid-May is when they started the IED stuff. Right. And yeah, that's when combat engineers forgot about the landmines, and we went to IED missions. Which, that was, I don't know, it's just, at least I can tell where a minefield is most of the time. <laughs> they yeah. They don't bury them in trash bags. But, what, the IED yeah. stickers? Oh, yeah, they were burying them everywhere. At first, they were taking our trash and using them as IEDs, like, if you throw it. MRE, the meal ready eat bag out the window. Uh huh. They take yeah. a bomb in there. So a foot patrol or a white Humvee goes by, and it can do some damage to people. Then, yeah. I, I mean, we're getting art, threatened with Article 15 or even prison for throwing trash out the vehicles after that. They're kind of like uh, the guys in Vietnam, man. They threw out the, the old M72 laws or the sea ration camps with the laws. But oh, yeah. the North Vietnamese were turned in the movement using the make effective movement traps, that type of stuff. Yeah, they definitely they did that. Fly. Yeah, they definitely did that. Oh, sea ration uh, cans. I mean, yeah, you know all that. You watch some of the Vietnam stuff and see some of the stuff from Afghanistan in the cities and Iraq in the city, it, it kind of, I mean, it's kind of hard to hide a punji stick in a sand, sand dune, but some of the stuff like leaving their gear around and you want to pick it up for a souvenir, it going off, they were doing stuff like that. That's pretty simple. Yeah, the booby traps. Yeah. So, well, I know the North Vietnamese were known for doing that too, booby trap, or booby trap a body. That way you turn the body over, especially an American body. Well, oh, there's yeah. no rest of the story. And, and they was good at that too, Thomas. Yeah, I yeah. heard that from yeah. many of friends who were in Vietnam. Yeah, you better get a rope or something, you know, and pull it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. They, 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 was good at, they was good at, we usually like a grapple sometimes. We had one and then pull the body, you know, and, and just duck yeah. down. Uh-huh. Yeah, of course, sadly, we're the ones that fight fair when nobody else does. So, yeah. And uh, what part of Iraq were you in at the time? I know you said Baghdad, but... Well, uh, we traveled 
we didn't travel along the main highway. We were kind of off trying to hit major towns. We pulled off a kind of a blitz creek, hit the town just enough to yeah. get the enemy subdued and move on. That lasted until the big sandstorm, which well, I think we were outside. Of, oh, yeah, I was living in a trash dump outside of Alpine Wall. Literally a trash dump. And I was just going to ask storm. you about the sandstorm, yeah. Oh, and that sand, We woke up, I woke up about zero nine that day. And by 10.30 in the morning, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Engineers, we don't get thermals. The tankers got thermals. We don't. <laughs> yeah, well, the tankers and most units got well, like I'm talking, you know, infantry in the cab and so on. Well, the tanks, Jerry got them on the tanks. They're TPS. Yeah. The thermal side. But Bradley found them too. Yeah, yeah. Well, was, oh, yeah. Trust me. And, uh. Well, it was bad about that sandstorm. Well, it was completely red. And we're sitting around, we can't do much, can't see anything. We're like, wait, the end of the world is supposed to be when um, <laughs> uh, Babel falls. Yeah? <laughs> Didn't the Marines take Babel to the other day? And now we got this. We just triggered it in the world. And then from the second day of the sandstorm, we got to, we're moving. And it's like, how are we moving? Well, there's thermal. We're like, the Abrams and Bradley's have them. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> so we have people hanging off the back of APCs and our with tin lights. <laughs> Which you couldn't see until you ran into back. I was going to say, I learned. I didn't see that at Fort Irwin, you know. Uh, you know, you get to, I've been out there when we had some nasty sandstorms. In fact, my uh, first rotation in 84 out the Fort Irwin, uh, we were picking up vehicles from the railhead and the sandstorms hit. And, of course, the railhead was in Barstow at that time, or actually the Marine Corps logistic base. Tw yeah, so here we are traveling, huh? 29 Palms? No, no, in Barstow, you there. Well, in Barstow, you had the Marine Corps, a small Marine Corps base in Barstow. It was called the yeah. Marine Corps Logistic Base, and uh, the railhead they was there at the know, time. It's still there. Oh. Yeah, well, we had the railhead. We had to take all the vehicles off the railhead and uh, road barge them all the way back to Fort Irwin, 30 miles in the sandstorm. I mean, by the time we got back, you know, uh, you could barely see... Uh, lights don't do any good when you can't see, you know, 10, 15 feet past your nose uh, in a sandstorm. And uh, the star visibility the wasn't Anna bad as yours. Huh? The Santa Ana winds. They were no joke at our border. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We did our rotation during the Santa Ana wind. And they get an armored personnel carrier rocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I see, you know, like... Uh, I had an apartment at Barstow when I was able to, I had time to live there, and uh, you, the windowsills had sand in them from the sand from the windstorms there. They blow that sand through the crevices of the window, and you end up with sand on the ledge. I was at my apartment in Barstow. Of course, I live right on the edge of town, where you're next to the open desert, and uh, it blowed through. But uh, yeah. I mean, I just, I just know, of course, the sand over in Iraq's a bit finer than, uh, the California desert, high desert. Because out in the California high desert, it's a little yeah. grittier. But once that wind gets howling, I don't think the grip makes a difference. It just blows. <laughs> so, and, Chris, uh, so, Chris, you had to have your face cover up, you know, when, during the same storm? Well, me? The troops. Well, we didn't have, we didn't have those face covers yet. Okay. We're using the, um, what is it, bandoliers? You guys have the bandoliers, I think, back even then. Oh, yeah, the bandoliers for the M16s. Mm -hmm. Well, not the bandoliers. The little, little triangle pieces of cloth that you're supposed to use for tourniquets and right. all oh. stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, the green stuff. Our face. Yeah. But my problem is, I got a severe allergy to 
and I could agree with mine on, so I just left it off. But, yeah, yeah. I was spitting up. Well, I would probably still cough it up saying Wow. But we pulled yeah. into our next location, and that night it started raining, and it literally was raining big mud clots out of the sky. Then I'm pulling guard on the 50 cal, and I hear someone go, I think it's snowing. <laughs> it's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, after you toured Iraq, what did you end up doing? ETS them from there, or what happened? Or did you get back to the States in ETS at Fort Benning? I came back. I came back. Fort Benning and I started having problems and yeah I got admitted to the hospital and I was chaptered out for medical for PTSD and I left out of the army on the army's birthday June 16th of 2004 <laughs> yeah that's when you came back to Illinois then right no I went back to Colorado Springs for a year. Oh, really? You did? I didn't know that. Of course. Yes. So, I and I started doing self-medication. And I said, I'm going to kill myself doing this. So I, then I came back to Illinois. Where I went oh, to all okay. the diesel mechanics. Yeah. So. And, uh, okay. So. I know you're active with the VFW, I know that for a fact, so, and, uh, actually Chris was my senior vice, uh, Levi, until I stepped out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, he where's the thing? I ran for senior vice, and he left me. Oh, he, he left, he just pulled out on you, huh, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's something about, uh, starting back to work after I move, uh, turn it it made things tough to do anything, so. Hey, Jeb's done pretty good from what I've seen, so. And, uh, so. But, uh, yeah. Now, I know, uh, Levi, I can tell you this, and uh, Levi, I like this, Chris. Uh, well, Levi likes talking about Korea all the time, so, uh, but Chris enjoyed his tour, his year in Korea, uh, Levi. Oh, did he? Okay. Uh, I, I was just going to ask him that, too. <laughs> it was, it, it was, it it was coming, yes. I, I, I did uh, partake in the soju. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got a bottle of the refrigerator. Oh, did I say that? I'm serious, too. I picked up a bottle today. Sorry, no. <laughs> Don't come over. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you stayed in Korea, months, Chris, 12 months or 13 months? I did 12 months. Okay. It was a 13-month yeah. tour when we were there. Uh, most people did 12 months when I was there. Okay. Um, yeah, I got there. I was at Camp Castle, same as you of course. But I think I've said that. Um, TDC was my stopping ground. I did get to go down, down to Chuchito and Pusan. Uh, I call it Chuchito. Yeah, apples are whatever. <laughs> it's the waterfall. The waterfall, huh? Yeah, uh, Chinjo's a pretty island. Hey, there's waterfalls down there, Camp Stanley, too. Sounds to me. Yeah, but uh, you can't see the only waterfall that directly empties into the Pacific Ocean. So, Camp Stanley. No. Uh, it emptied in for, uh, it was part of the river there. Yeah. Coming out the mouth. Yeah. Hey, so, Thomas, how far were Pusan then from Seoul? Uh, Pusan was Seoul. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I could probably guess that. It would have probably been close to 400 miles. Oh, okay. Because Korea is 500 miles from tip to tip, from the southern uh, tip up to the north of DMZ. Okay. So, I would guess about maybe a little over 400 miles. Because you were, uh, the, you know, remember, Seoul's only like 35, 40 miles from the DMZ. Oh, yeah. Although, uh, drive, driving-wise in Korean traffic, it was like two and a half hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, you, you're right. 
<laughs> so, uh, and, uh, but yeah, uh, and see, Chris, uh, like you said, you know where Camp Casey was, Levi. Right. You were there at Seventh ID still at it. Well, Camp Castle is like, God, uh, what, a quarter mile, Chris? North of Casey. Not, on that, I'm sorry, maybe. Maybe less than that, because Eighth you of can a mile. walk to the, yeah, did you go out, um, where the, well, I don't know if the great field was there back in the 60s and 70s, but Tom knows where the parade field is. If you go out that gate, uh -huh. take a right, it's about an eighth of a mile, and we always did our PT test there at Camp Casey. Okay. Oh, okay, I know where you're talking about. So. Yeah, we just crossed the train track. I don't you you've been back more recently. I don't know if the police station there on the left side of the road is still there, but we're just past the police station. Yeah, I know where you're talking. About. So and uh, yeah, I tell you what, TDC has changed quite a bit from the pictures I see. I didn't get a chance to see it much when I was over there, Chris. But uh, but I've seen pictures of it, and yeah, I didn't. It's not the same TDC when we were over there. So, yeah, the pictures I see time. from people uh, online. Don't, yeah, people that's been stationed there recently. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah. The thing is, my brother-in-law was there at Camp Castle in 2004 through 2006 or 2005 through 2007. And I didn't know about this until after I got married. He was a welder. But me and him talked about PDC and all that, and he got married to a drinky girl. <laughs> oh, did he? he yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mojo's. <laughs> oh, Mojo's? Yeah. yeah. I, knew old guy. I knew the guy who owned that at one time. I can't think of his name. It was, uh, it was a damn uh, American on that thing at one time. Well, uh, when I... In 2000, it was like an American biker club. Like all your your guys is there that had motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. It was like what? a biker bar. What? You got to be killing. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I didn't go there, but I know there was an American guy who owned Mojo's or a brand it, I should say. Uh -huh. And uh, I forget where it was at in TDC, but... Yeah, of course, you got a family by, by the 90s. There was a, uh, really a lot of contractors over there by then. Okay. The army was contracted out so much of the stuff. So, we are getting new barracks at the time. Yeah. What they do? Build new barracks at Camp Castle, then close the camp down? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what they do with the camps. I didn't get a chance to go north of Casey. Yeah, when I was over there in 2000, fall of 2015. We were up in Casey for about three to four hours, and we took off and went back to Seoul, and that was it. And uh, But I didn't recognize Casey, Chris. You know, when I left, you know what it looked like. Uh, you and I were there. You know, I left when you were there. So, uh, and Casey looked the same for years. Uh, it very, it, you know, they had some new barracks go in and buildings, but for the most part, it looked the same for, you know, several years. And, uh, well, I went back in 2015, uh, Burger King moved. That's a park up there, by the way, Chris, where Burger King was. Well, hold on, hold on. Tell yeah. me, Burger King? Yeah, they, oh, yeah, don't ask me what. They had a Burger King there in Camp Casey, yeah. Okay. It was in an old, uh, it was in an old maintenance building. Uh huh. So the movie theater was just next to it. It was in an old maintenance building. So of course I watched I watched those pull it out in the night, uh, latter nineties. <laughs> so, but yeah, they had a Burger King there. It was up there where the first of the well, you were no seven by D still had when you were there, Levi. Okay. But yeah, it was okay. up. Uh, they had a Burger King there. So wow. yeah, we also a Popeyes. Oh, yeah. And at the bowling alley was Mean Gene's girl. Wow. Like me, the former wrestling announcer, Mean Gene Overlick. Oh, yeah. I yeah, remember Mean Gene. Yeah. yeah, it was Mean Gene's girl. Pretty good hamburgers. You could play slot machines on Camp Casey. 
Wow. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, went, I went broke there a couple times. <laughs> but, yeah, the joke when I was there in 2000 was if North Korea can't stop, they would stop at Camp Casey at Burger King. They won't go any further. <laughs> well, see, Popeye's, Popeye's went in there. I forget what, in the mid-90s. I'd be the manager there. And... Uh, <laughs> I forget his name. He was a big guy, heavy set guy, real nice guy. I think he ate some of the profits, but oh well. But uh you know, uh in fact I knew the manager of Burger King, I can't think of his name. But, yeah, but it was up there uh Burger King was in an old uh what do you want to say, oversized maintenance building, the ten huts. You know, like the Quonset huts we uh, the big maintenance one. It oh, was yeah. around the big maintenance one. Right. And uh that's where Burger King still was in 2000. But it was up there, uh, what, uh, well, they, you know, the same year they changed three times. It was first the 17th when they moved to Casey in the 70s. Then it became 520th in 88. Then in 95, 96, it changed to 29. Okay. And in fact, in fact, a little trivia for you or history or whatever, the current 8th Army Commander, General uh, Vinnie Brooks, was uh, two nines, uh commander when they first uh, changed over from 96 to 98. And he's now the current, he was a uh, two-man, two-six back then. He's a light colonel. And he's now the 8th Army commander. Okay. So, uh, and a uh, good man. He's a good man to work with. And uh, You remember but, uh, the, you remember the Sergeant Major of 2ID when you, in 2000? Well, oh, God, I didn't. I'd he have to look at that man. His, I, w- I had to hold the battalion colors for his change of responsibility. That man did 18 years of his 25 years in Korea. So 18 that years. Of, yeah. two tour, that was on top of two tours in Vietnam before he did that. Wow. 18 years in Korea. Yeah. I think he stayed after he got out. And. Then while I was there, I think it was General White. I think so. When no, he Sheffield, was Sherfield left. General Sherfield was there, but I think he left in 2000. He was actually yeah, uh, was General Sherfield. Yeah. And he, it, he took over in 98 because I got a certificate of achievement as a contractor. And, uh, and his, from his, replacement, his replacement was... The famous General Andre. Oh, okay. If listeners don't know who he is, he is the one that took over the mission in New Orleans after Katrina. The Reagan yeah. agent. That man Sorry. had a huge head. <laughs> His Kevlar cover was literally a GP medium. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you talk about generals, uh, what, so when was he division commander? He ended up being the, the overall, uh, whatever you call him, at the beginning of uh, when they kicked off OEF and uh, OIF, when they kicked off in uh, Iraq, uh, General Franks, Tommy Franks. Yeah. He was division commander a few years before that. Correct. And, uh, in fact, he was division commander in 96 and 98. Because uh, General Brooks was... Uh, a battalion, like I said, a battalion commander then uh, during his command. Franks, by the way, was an artillery officer. I said, oh, great. You got an artillery officer leading the charge here in Iraq. Hey. <laughs> Franks was the man. Who uh, Tommy, Tommy Franks was his name. Now, there was another Franks who was in, and who was a Vietnam fan, uh, Frederick Franks. He, uh, he was a three- Port commander in a uh, very desert storm, and uh, that guy was short of leg. He lost his leg in Vietnam, but that was the other Franks uh, that's out there. And uh, but uh, yeah, Tommy Franks, yeah, he was a four star. But uh, Brooks was uh, Brooks made his one star by that. In fact, when he left in '98, he uh, made full bowl. Brooks was a fast tracker. Uh, he had 16, 17 years in the Army. He made 06. Speaking of leadership in Korea, my first aunt when I got to Korea, and his name was First Aunt Clark. Was, I, uh, 
first heart. That was his first name. <laughs> he became, and not last year, but 2015, he became the first African American to be the command sergeant major in West Point. Really? And now he is command sergeant major of SETCOM in the Middle East. Okay. Wow. But, yeah, I was kind of excited when I saw him on the Army Navy game, but. I, I had a message him on Facebook saying, "Why can't you win?" <laughs> he leaves and they win. So, <laughs> so you were messing with him, on Chris, right? What? What was that? What? I, said, I said you were messing with him, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, that, there you go. <laughs> uh, he, also, he was also a Bravo Company three seventeen. Okay. When we went to Iraq, so uh, okay. yeah, me and him met up again. Okay. Hey, Chris, while you was in Iraq, uh, also, uh, did you all have what, house-to-house searches or, or what? What was going on? Yeah, we had to do the door kickers. Mm-hmm. Collect the taxes. Oh, collect the taxes. Uh, okay. I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of odd. Uh, maybe like four out of eight people we took into custody. Uh-huh. Was from a different country. I was like, really? Yeah. And then uh-huh. we had certain tricks to get them to talk English to us. Okay. You throw a pork MRE, they ought to automatically learn English. I don't know how that happens. So, uh, so, so that got like, pretty, uh, pretty dangerous, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you... When you're young and dumb, I mean, you think about the danger, but you hype yourself up. Right. <laughs> you, I mean, you can be scared inside, but you better know your job and do it well on the outside. And, and that's true. Yeah, I agree. So, so you had seven years in the army when you end up getting a medically retired put out, huh? Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, most of my time was peacetime until 2001. Yeah. Or, yeah. I was at Fort Benning when that happened. Well, well Chris, at least they didn't, they didn't lose your military records. Cause you know Thomas tell you know back in the days they lost a lot of medical records that they yeah, said like mine yeah like mine yeah <laughs> and, and, and my too Thomas cause I told you I called I called spam my giants while I was in uh, in basic and you know well, I went through my claims they couldn't find any of that yeah well that's me too now Chris they have, they were still paper records for medical and dental when you were in right when you got out. Yeah, I, I heard they were slow to convert over still. Okay. I think you were the one that told me you still have paper in 2004. Yeah, we still have paper. We still have paper. Oh, um, my shot records were on the computer. Okay. Um, which kind of had fun about that. Huge <laughs> series of anti-shots. shots. Oh, yeah. I can imagine what else was in that shot record, too, Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had nine nine anthrax shots. Well it's not in your it's not on my computer. Okay. All the anthrax shots. Yeah, I remember those yeah. in ninety. I got the nine and had to start all over because they lost my shot record. Oh man, that's 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 awful. Yeah, of course all the other shots are on there, yellow fever. Uh-huh. Hepatitis. Yeah. All those. And of course, in Kuwait, we got the smallpox. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, we got the pitchforks. <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of funny because with the new smallpox, if you never had the smallpox shot, it's only three pricks with it. Mm-hmm. If you've had it before, it's like 12. Wow. So our our major's like, what? Well, why am I getting stuck so many times? True. 
Woo. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I remember. I remember just the three prick, and it hurt. So you talking about twelve? That's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I had so many shots in the army. I forget what's what. At the same time, I turn around. Oh, you need to get vaccinated for this. Okay. <laughs> Line up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thomas. When you went into Kempo, I know when we went into Kempo, when we first entered the country, you know, we had to drop our pants in and get the shots. They, yeah. They, they line us up in the airport. Well, I think every time you got somewhere, Levi, they figure out their shots you don't have, you need. Right. Like, really? You all just dream this crap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every time I'm going somewhere, prepping for this and doing that, it's like, oh, yeah, you need these shots. Why, well, haven't you just realized I needed them? Why didn't you give it to me a few years ago? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like every time PCS, oh, you need these shots, you know. And, Idris for the old uh, Cold War exercise, and that Idris is what we used to do uh, back in the Cold War days uh, to prep to go to war with Germany. So, like I was at Fort Riley, we used to do Idris, and they would check your records, make sure everything's up to date, and they were seem to feel, oh well, you need a shot. It's not, you know, you haven't uh-huh. had it. It's like how many Idris I've been through. Now you tell me I need this shot and this shot, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going back to Korea. It's like, oh, you need this shot. It's yeah. like, really? I've had this one before, I thought. Or are they going to test you? Right. Yeah, it's like, geez. So, mm-hmm. and of course, in the mid 80s, that's when all the AIDS stuff started. And then they went nuts and doing AIDS tests. Wow. Every time you thought. And uh, so, uh, and we got it like yeah. every six months. Yeah. Well, Thomas, you know, we're getting pretty close to that time now. We, we're approaching it real fast. Is it already? Yeah, about two, about, we probably got about two minutes left. Jeez, I didn't realize we already killed an hour. <laughs> See, Chris, I told you this quick. It, it go by fast. Especially for Tom, we'll talk for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. Where you get that at? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Chris, you got any shout-out you'd like to give to anyone? I... I know you're down in Georgia area, so oh, yeah. else, Fort Benning. No, no, this broadcast on the this broadcast on the internet, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Hey, really Jimmy Ryan. Hey, Jimmy Ryan even figured out how to listen to it. If he could do it, you should be able to, Chris. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the sappers. <laughs> and and tell us, what you what you got on the next week's show? Oh, hold on. Uh, Oh God! We Chris, got he got he, Chris, he got a list. Thomas got a long list. We got another engineer next week. Another engineer, <laughs> all right. <laughs> got another engineer. Uh, Bill Schultz will be on next week. Uh, Bill is uh, he's a Cold War vet. He served in Korea from seventy nine to eighty two, by the way. But okay. he was with Second Engineers also, so it's a little more time there than Chris did, but. Uh, yeah, he's an engineer. So the week after that, we're back to 19 Deltas. But Chris actually knows that 19 Delta. So, you know, Chris, you remember Chris Agano? Yep, and he's going down to Georgia. Yeah, I know. I've been following, so he's going to be a cop down uh, Levi's way. So yeah, All right. And, uh, <laughs> I forget where he's going to Georgia, Lawrenceville. Yeah, Lawrenceville is not far from here at all. Yeah, that's where uh, this this young man's going to be. Uh, he's he's going to become a police officer, I think, in Lawrenceville or uh-huh. maybe the county. I'm not sure. I have to check, but he'll be on in a couple of weeks. So, uh, and because uh, he asked if we're moving, it would do. Uh, in fact, I said, "Oh, it's my phone." But I said, "Where you're moving to? You're moving pretty close." To- <laughs> 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 can about walk. He can about go to your house and do the interview. Oh, oh, there you go. He come right on to the house and come in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need him. Uh, I need him on my side anyway. That's right. Uh, get, yeah. get some of the tickets now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chris, I like to thank you for coming on. I, I did. Boy, I didn't even realize an hour went by. God. And uh, you know, uh, you always listen to the show. I'll resend you the link to make sure you know where it's at. And just so you know, what what happens with the show? It'll play out starting Tuesday through uh, Monday. 
And once the show's complete, we podcast the shows, and uh, and we have podcasts on the three different sites. With YouTube, be, YouTube being one of them. So, uh, and we got I got a sep- we got a separate page on YouTube just for uh, the radio station WLMR or for the veteran show. I shouldn't say the radio station, but for the veteran show for the radio station. There you go. So, uh, and I'll uh, I'll get that information to you, no problem. But uh. But yeah, just so you know what's going on, it'll start broadcasting Tuesday at seven o'clock our time, Chris, Central Time. So, and all you got to do is go to wl wlmrradio.com, or and this is for everybody, the listeners too. You know, you can use the TuneIn app and look up wlmr-db. So okay. and make sure you put the dash db in there so you can find the radio station. That's right, and, and we put. What's that, Levi? I was just saying, and Chris, I enjoyed you being on, and I learned a lot from you too, Chris, because I'm one of them grandpa soldiers, you know, way back in the days. <laughs> but uh, but you, but you, you taught me a lot, though, man. I really appreciate that too. Yeah, well, it's always interesting to hear different veterans from you know the eras, or even over you know laughing, but the experiences are different, even though similar, and. uh uh, so of course I do know some of the stories already, uh, Levi. I could we could get into the intimate ones, right, Chris? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so and classified. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'll talk. I'll talk to Leanne first. But uh, that's his wife, Levi. Okay. Leanne. Hey, Chris. Uh, yeah, nice yeah. yeah, I got my boss too. She the uh, CEO of the station. So. Uh, oh. Yeah, so we, so she's we, the boss. yeah, she the boss, she the, she the boss, she the boss. <laughs> I, I got three other bosses. <laughs> okay, hey Thomas, you want to close it out, Thomas? Yeah, uh, like I said, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, listening. I'd like to thank Chris for coming on the show and uh, you know listening this week. It's uh, you know and share with everybody. You know we're about veterans here on the show. Everything we do is just about veterans and it's talking to veterans. All right, well, so uh, you know, so from Chris uh, and Thomas and myself, you know, we like to tell everyone good night. Good night.